Hello and welcome to Everybody Pulls the Tarp. I'm your host, Andrew Moses, and with me, I have a very, very special guest, Nancy Renee Braun. Nancy, welcome to the show. Thanks, Andrew. So happy to be here. Thanks for having me. It's great to have you. Well, for my audience, Nancy is the associate choreographer of Beetlejuice on Broadway. The show uh, re received eight Tony Award nominations. So uh, there's a lot to unpack with Nancy, and uh, we're looking forward to getting into it. Nancy, where I want to begin is is going way back to how you got into into dance and, and performing. So can you take me back to where it all began for you? Yeah, for me, it began way, way back. I've been doing it my whole life. I was put in a little ballet tap jazz combo class when I was barely three years old, and I loved it. And from there, it just grew and grew and grew. And I uh, danced competitively growing up. So that was my sport. You know, I did it upwards of 30 hours a week. You know, um, I trained in singing. I trained in acting. I started acting professionally when I was eight years old. Um, and then after a few years of being in the business as a child, my parents encouraged me to, you know, still be a kid do school, pursue it, take lessons, and then um, go for my dreams as an adult. But I'm, I'm grateful for that because I was in and out of school for a few years. And um, luckily, they were advocates of education. So um, yeah, I started super long. I don't remember life without it. And they never pushed me to pursue it professionally, but I never thought of anything else. So I went to college for it. I went to Northwestern. Um, where they have a really interesting theater program because it's a liberal arts school. It's not a conservatory. Um, so while I was a theater major, I was also able to take advantage of kind of being like a well-rounded student. Um, you know, I was a business minor and there was a ton of student opportunities there, like student-led productions. So um that's when I really, I performed in them and I also developed my love of choreography when I was in college. Um, and yeah, and then from there, the professional career began. <laughs> so, everybody, so everybody wants to know, how do, you, how do you get that first role on Broadway? Because yeah. yours was Gypsy, I believe, correct? Yeah, that's right. I, mine was not in a very conventional way, but I don't know if there is a conventional way. Um, it worked really hard. I went to an audition for Gypsy. It actually originated, most productions don't just, you know, rehearse in New York and go to Broadway. They, they start somewhere else. So I was in school near Chicago. They were doing Gypsy in Chicago one summer. So I went to an open call with hundreds of girls, waited in line for hours, went in, sang 16 bars of music, which is like 30 seconds, say goodbye and left and hope for the best. I got a call back. Um, my parents were super uh, nice to me because it was during winter break and I begged them to let me fly back to Chicago. So I did, I flew back, I went to the callback and then I didn't hear anything. So I assumed I didn't get it. Five months later, somebody booked a different show and was unable to be in Gypsy and they offered me the role. Um, so there I was doing Gypsy for the summer in Chicago with um, Patti Lapone. it was her production. Cut to a year later, I am finishing my senior year. I'm in New York for um, Senior Showcase. That's like a time where people who are majoring in theater get to come to New York and audition for agents and casting directors and kind of get their entry into New York City, hopefully get an agent for themselves. And Gypsy's back with Patti Lapone and there's auditions and I didn't know any better. I was 17 years old. I called the choreographer from the previous production because I saw she was still working on it. And I asked her if I could have an audition. She said, okay. Apparently that is a very bold move. I didn't know any, I was like, well, I was in it before. I should get a chance again. Makes so sense. I, uh, yeah, I got to come to the audition and then I got to fly back once again, <laughs> this time from Chicago to New York for the final callback. Um, and audition for the entire, you know, that was like 
unlike any other experience I had ever had before. Granted, I was still in college, so I was not even in the professional world really yet, but it was when you were in a final callback for a Broadway show, there's like 20 people behind the table when you walk into the room to sing for them. So same thing, 30 seconds of singing, a little bit of dancing, and um, I think within the week, I found out that I had got it, and it was it was the New York premiere, but it wasn't Broadway yet. It was at City Center Encores, which is like a concert venue in New York. Um, so I did that for the summer. I graduated from Northwestern, and I moved home and moved into the city a week later to start rehearsals. <laughs> wow. So okay. So so now so so now you're the associate choreographer for for Beetlejuice on yeah. Broadway. T talk to me about how you made the transition from performer to choreographer. Yeah. So I, like I, I kind of stopped myself on my college part. So college is where I developed a passion for choreography and I was given a lot of exposure and opportunities there. So I always knew I wanted to choreograph and I always knew I wanted to perform. I equally wanted to do them both. I didn't see that I had to pick a channel. Um, performing was the obvious and easier way because you can't just really walk into New York and be a choreographer. Um, so I was, Lucky enough to be in Gypsy, it transferred to Broadway the following year. So like the first two and a half, three years of living in New York, I was in a show, I was employed, I was working on Broadway, so I had some credential and I, I didn't have to be searching for a job, which is the majority of the time what you're doing as an actor is you're auditioning, you're trying to get the job, you're working a lot less than you are preparing for it. So I happened to be employed, which is rare, and I was able to make it known that I wanted to be on the other side of the table. I wanted to be a choreographer. I wanted to be part of the creative process. And I was young and I didn't know any better. So I made that really clear. I did a lot of cold calls. I did a lot of volunteering my time for random choreographers and you know, often they would say, okay, come on in if you want to work for free. And uh, <laughs> I I um I pursued it right off the bat, mostly as like an assistant, as like just being in the room. I tried to be in the room with as many choreographers as possible. Um, and after, in between Gypsy transferring from City Center to Broadway, I did another production in Florida, a little mini tour of a show, and I met someone there who was also in the show with me. He was the dance captain, and that's the person who's like uh, in the cast, but in kind of an assistant to the choreographer, like in charge of maintaining the show. And he was also wanting to be a choreographer and he was ready to go. So he stopped, he like cold, you know, stopped performing after that. And he was like, do you want to assist me? And I was like, yeah. So we started working together and he's the the head choreographer of Beetlejuice. So 10 years later, we made our Broadway debuts together. What a, what a, what a great story. So, okay. So, so help me understand a little bit the difference between, and, and the audience, the, the, yeah. the difference between the choreographer and the associate choreographer, because, because yeah. I, I, I've, I've done my homework and I, and I, I believe there to be a little bit of a difference. And, yeah. and so, so, so help me understand exactly what the difference is. Yeah. So the, I mean, the choreographer is that the head, you know, choreographer of the show, and then a choreographer has one to two associates on a Broadway show and maybe even an assistant. So your associate is, you know, your right-hand man, basically. Um, it's different depending on who you're working with, because theater is an art. It's subjective. There's no rules. It's not really defined, the associate position. But for me, what it's been and what it's always been with the, I work with two choreographers most closely, somebody, uh, the one in Broadway and, and another in TV and film. And um, it's it's a collaboration. It's like we can finish each other's sentences. I know what they want, what their vision is. We have the vision together. We um, go into the room, just the two of us, and create the show and the vocabulary for it. We invite friends in and take risks and, hey, I have an idea. I have an idea. You know, we're all, it's they're, they're the leader and we're like right next to them basically um, assisting them creatively, you know, validating a, a good idea, uh, negating a bad one, <laughs> you know, yeah. um, you, the people that I've worked with, you become very close to and you understand their aesthetic and you kind of help them execute it. And then also as an associate, I can kind of take their, both of my, um, both of my colleagues happen to be men. I can take their ideas and, um, embellish on them and, and tighten them up and, and really they have like a broad sense of something and then I can like make it a reality for them. So there's a lot of trust. 
there's a lot of um, vulnerability and just knowing what each other want, just understanding, having the same objective, having the same goal for what the production entails. And that just comes with time and with the right match. What 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 is the what was the biggest challenge for you, or or or, or the biggest hurdle in making that shift from performer to choreographer? Is there was there one thing that you could pinpoint that was the biggest challenge for you to navigate? Um, it was, I'd say. So if you want to say, like I said, I made my Broadway debut, and then ten years later, I made my choreography Broadway debut. So it was a period of a decade, and over that time, my transition was very gradual. I was still performing. I was still in shows off Broadway, assisting other people. So I was really, I had, I'd say at some point, I was like 90% performer, 10% a choreographer. And over the years, it for me, it was a very organic, gradual shift. Um, there was definitely a long period of time where it was 50-50. I'd sometimes I'd be performing in the things that I was also the associate for. That's not uncommon. And, um, and then I, you know, another side goal for me was to, I met, you know, Todd, uh, my husband, and we wanted to have a family. And that's a difficult thing in my industry. It's not as common to do it so young or to do it ever at all. And you really have to like commit and make the decision. So that was definitely not a hurdle, but um, something that kept me in that associate position and kind of transferred me out of the performing for a while because you can't do it as much when you're pregnant but I was I have two kids I was pregnant twice um and I worked all the way up until I had them and I was back at work seven weeks later and if you're a performer that's just not possible in the same way you know your body needs more time to recover and you also can't work with the physical appearance it's just a little more difficult as a performer so I think once I had my son, almost five years ago, that's when it really started to just shift to just choreography. And I found that I was very fulfilled by that and, you know, more fulfilled by that and very excited by that, just with time and maturity and um, the creative fulfillment. And I, I liked my position as an associate as well. And I, I've done playing my own things too, which was also fulfilling in a different way. But I wouldn't say that it was like a, a hurdle for me. It was just like a natural progression. And having kids definitely kind of pushed me over the edge into just choreography land. Um, but I never say never. I still end up performing in things from time yeah. to time. Not shows like a Broadway show for eight, right. eight nights a week, but or what, eight nights a week. What an interesting, what an interesting um, evolution. And and, yeah. and Nancy, as you and I were talking about um, earlier before we, we went on camera, the, this show is predicated on uh, a philosophy that I have that uh, great teams are powered by individuals who go far beyond the, the boundaries of their, their job description. So um, there's so much that goes into uh, putting on a Broadway show, both when it's in development and when you're, 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 you're running the show and, 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 and performing. Um, so so I, I guess give, you know, give some perspective to, to the audience here about what they don't see, right? What go, yeah. what, what goes into, because they see the show, but there yeah. is so much that goes into it before you even begin <laughs> rehearsals. So maybe in, you know, in a minute or two, w walk us through some of the things that we don't see that are really um, the nitty gritty of, of, of making it all come together. You got it. So um, basically, you know, I think a lot of people's predetermined ideas that like a show evolves it rehearses and then it's on stage. That's not the case. It takes several years for a show to get to Broadway majority of the time. Um, Beetlejuice was like a seven year process and I came in at like year four or five. So for me it was two to three years until our Broadway debut. It takes a long time to develop a show because first there has to be written, it has to be created, there needs to be music. Um, then a director gets involved, we start doing readings, we're edits, you know, you get a producer, you get a theater, where are you gonna go? You take the production out of town and try it in a theater in Chicago or Boston or DC, like Beetlejuice. Um, then you come back and you do developmental labs of the choreography, of the script, of the, um, the whole show, uh, you know, of the first act, of the second act. Like there are just endless amounts of details that needs to be ironed out because it's such a massive collaboration between so many people that all see the show in a certain way and you want to bring all those great minds and great ideas together into one comprehensive 
hopefully fantastic production. So it's a really long time before you finally get to the Broadway rehearsals. And when you're at that, that point, you've probably done the production in its entirety before and you're remounting it and um, you know what you need to change and you know what needs to stay because it's been so successful with tested previous audiences elsewhere, whether it be off-Broadway or, like I said, another part of the country. And um, and then you're in previews for a month where you can still edit the show with an actual Broadway audience, which is pretty wild because sometimes there's just like little teeny changes, it's tweaks at that point, but in Beetlejuice, there was even a whole song that was replaced. Wow. You know? But I think it's only because the material is so ingrained in you and you're so, in the show and you're so involved with it at that point that a number can be replaced overnight you know yeah and and, and i want to i want to oh, so i want to dig in a little bit on on collaboration you talked about collaboration oh yeah so it's a it's a team effort and and a, a cast uh, and crew has to come together to to make this thing go how mm-hmm. how important is 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 the the culture and the the fit amongst the cast and the the crew very um the, you know, first there's the collaboration between the creatives and the writers and the producers, the people who are all behind the scenes, you know, um, there's finding the right chemistry there, directors meet with choreographers and see if they're a good fit and share the same vision for the show and then they have to meet with the producers and they have to, you know, everybody has to kind of be on the same page and you have to find a very cohesive team in that way. And um, actors come into the picture like way later. Um, And I think it's, you know, and then they also contribute to the creative process because you might all have this idea of what it is and someone steps in, like, for for example, Alex Brightman is Beetlejuice in our production. He is super crucial in the development of Beetlejuice, the character. Um, So he helped create the show in so many ways as well. Um, But, you know, in casting, we just are looking for people that are, um, or I, I guess, I don't know what's true of everybody, but I'm always looking for people that are team players that are going to say yes, not going to be afraid to, you know, take chances and risks and not going to be afraid to fall on their face. Not literally, sometimes literally, but (laughs) not going to be afraid to, to go there with you. And, um, you know, uh, that creates a really good, cast culture and casting the the principal performers as like stand up people who are there to do their job is also I find been something that's super helpful in making a show successful when the cast all likes each other the show is just better it's it's a happier environment to be in and um and we are very lucky to have that in Beetlejuice so in a way I mean you're you're essentially adding pieces to the team as you go yeah it, it's it's not like a a, a baseball team which begins the season together and and maybe there's a a player or two that's interchanged throughout via trade but you guys are literally building the team as you go so how do you when you how do you know that a person's going to fit or 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 do do sometimes people not fit and 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 you have to kind of change course yeah um it's exactly that casting is a huge part of the process and sometimes you know in these developmental labs and pre-productions that i talk about we eventually get to the point where we cast people who we hope will continue on with the show and and you'll learn in the process and we learned you know not everybody who was in it when i started several years in ended up in the broadway production in fact very few did um it just it just it just evolves and certain people are a match and certain are not and that's just you know character and like show specific but also um something really important is the teams that I work with always look for people who are good sports, you know, team players, because we're all, we're an interesting industry in that many of us are like living our dreams. A lot of people in my industry have been like dreaming of doing this their whole life, you know, but it's easy to lose sight of that. And, um, you know, there's people get reputations and then it's a risk to work with them. So we learn, we definitely look for people who, have good references and, um, you know, Beetlejuice is a quirky out there comedy focused show. So, you know, each actor has their strengths. If that's you, then you end up in the show. You know, you might 
not be right for Beetlejuice and be totally right for a million other things. Like I think as an actor, you have to know what you're right for and we have to see that you're right for it. So it's a complicated process. It's not, there's no one right answer and there's no, it is a lot of like just trial and error and there's definitely times where it doesn't work out all, all the time. There's times that it doesn't yeah. work out, you know? Um, and then there's times where people are with the production, you know, I think Alex was the first person who ever played Beetlejuice for any of the readings and made it, you know, he was always it all the way through. So, so, so you, you seem like a, a really positive, optimistic person and yeah. show business is, is, is gotta be a really, uh, hard, hard place sometimes, right? Uh, there's, there's a lot of rejection. There's a lot of critics out there. How do you, how do you stay positive? Yeah, um, I'm definitely positive and optimistic because I'm so driven and I always say to people when they're younger and asking me about, you know, the business and I'm dreaming of it too, you know, I kind of say to them like a little dose of reality. If you can envision yourself doing anything else, like I, I love theater, but I could also see myself, you know, being a lawyer, then don't go to theater. You have to go into theater knowing that it's the only thing that you ever would want to do. You have to be so in love with it, so committed to it, and so driven to get to a point where it's your career because it's a super competitive business. You have to be in the right spot at the right time. And um, and you've got to have talent. And most of all, you've got to have kind of a super tough outer shell. And yeah, I'm positive and optimistic and seemingly friendly, but I'm, I'm tough cookie, you know, <laughs> that, I bet, that's I bet. The part of me that people don't see until they get to work with me in a good way though. You know, all I like to see con constructive criticism and, um, I'll, you know, I'll speak my opinion and I'll, um, you know, kind of have to prove yourself to anybody new that you encounter. But yeah, you've yeah. got to, you've got to want it super badly. It's got to want it. You've got to be tough. Yeah. Got to have that outer shell. I like that. I mm -hmm. like that. So, so um, one of the things you talked about earlier is that when you're when you're in this business, you many times you're spending more time looking for work um, and accumulating new projects than than actually maybe performing on a on a project. But but I, I know that you've got a lot of you know you always have a lot of irons in the fire. H how do you how do you manage it all? <laughs> um, you know. I it just kind of works itself out and sometimes it doesn't and sometimes you're doing double duty and working two full-time jobs at once and um sometimes you've got to turn something down because another job has come up that you can't turn down you know it's it's difficult because you're a freelancer you know and if you're so lucky as to have many opportunities um it's it's definitely a juggle and you've got to follow your heart and go with the project that you're the most passionate about you know that you see a future with I was part of an off-Broadway production that I both associate choreographed and performed in for seven years that always was Broadway bound and never made it. Um, and a lot of times I was offered jobs that conflicted with it that I had to turn down because I believed that this show could make it and, it and it didn't in the end, you know? So there's there's success stories and then there's way more, <laughs> not failure stories, but just stories that don't, conclude in a, a Broadway run and they don't have to. I don't think that defines the the experience. It doesn't define the success. It doesn't define what you've gotten out of it, you know, but juggling it is just part of the game. You know, if you're working in, you know, if you're a working choreographer, a working actor, if you're somebody who has established this as your career, you are juggling it is just, that's part of it. You know, people always ask me, you know, there'll be a time where, I'm like, wow, I have nothing planned for the next three months. I guess I'm just going to be home with my kids. It's going to be so great. And then the next day, like six things come up and I'm not going to be home at all. So it, That's you know, how it always is. Yeah, it's just you have to be okay to go with the flow and be very unpredictable and just trust in the, you know, trust in the journey. Well, Nancy, it's been such a, a pleasure having you on. And, and this has been such a fun conversation for me to, to learn all about this. Um, we, you know, we, uh, you are well on your way, and and when the uh, when the lights return to Broadway, we 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 all will be rooting for you, and we we can't wait to see what you uh, what you do next. Nancy, thanks, thank you so much for joining us. Thanks, great chatting with you.